The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowds, everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and I will not reject anyone who comes to me, because I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. And this is the will of the one who sent me, that I should not lose anything of what he gave me, but that I should raise it on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life, and I shall raise him on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. To the words of the Gospel, no sins be wiped away. The Marvel movies depict ordinary people with extraordinary gifts and abilities. And even though it's just fantasy, we're sometimes a bit jealous of what they can do. Saints, however, are the true, real-life heroes. Not because of what they did, but because of who they are. We want to be like them. They inspire us and serve as models for us. Today, on the Feast of All Souls, we celebrate the everyday, unofficial saints who have died, including those who are still being perfected in purgatory. You know, I was explaining purgatory at a parish in Illinois a few weeks ago. And I think he was 10 or 11, came up to me and he goes, so purgatory is like if your feet are dirty from playing in the mud, you have to wipe your feet before you go in the house? I was like, yeah, <laughs> you know? I mean, he, he got it because the book of Revelation is very clear. Nothing unclean can enter heaven. So purgatory is a little pit stop, a little cleanup, a little car wash on our way to heaven. Now, often other Christians will say to us, why do you ask the dead to pray for you? Why don't you just go straight to God? Now, if someone you love, I would say, if someone that you love were sick, would you ask me and in invite the members of my church to pray for that person? Yes. Why don't you just go straight to God? See, those in heaven are closer to God than we are and are, in a sense, more alive than we are since they are in the presence of God. They are where we all hope to be one day. This is not our home. We are pilgrims on a journey to our true home in heaven. The reality is that we are not praying to saints, but praying through them to Jesus, invoking their powerful intercession. If you look at our culture today, we have a challenge. You know, Bishop Barron says things, you know, like the, the age where a young person decides they are no longer Catholic, when they make the intellectual decision, I am no longer Catholic, is 12 years old. So they've already made the decision to leave the church before they even leave your house. And what are they leaving for? A system that doesn't believe in anything. It reminds me, when I was studying philosophy, of Epicurus. Epicurus was a philosopher who proposed that the way to attain happiness and a tranquil life was characterized by peace, freedom from fear, the absence of pain, and living a self-sufficient life surrounded by friends. Let's break that down. Peace and freedom from fear. Now, usually when you heard the, 
the, the word fear means to be afraid. But in the scriptures, when you hear fear, like the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That the word is Yahweh in Hebrew, which means honor, reverence, and respect. So what they say when they saying, I want peace from freedom and fear, is they're saying, I want freedom from honoring, reverencing, and respecting God. Why? Because I'm God. Moral relativism. The absence of pain. What does that look like in our culture today? Euthanasia and assisted suicide. Living a self-sufficient life surrounded by friends. Ah, Because you know the culture has a trinity too. The trinity of me, myself, and I. Pleasure and pain are the measures of what is good and what is evil. And that death, in the way that Epicurus thought, was the end of both body and soul, and therefore should not be feared. Pagans like Epicurus were convinced that there was nothing other than what could be measured, quantified, and observed. The material world is the full extent of our entire existence. It is a worldview that excludes anything that is supernatural. Now, atheism ultimately fails because it cannot satisfy the deepest longing of the human heart. And I confront atheists fairly often. And I have yet to hear the answer to the question, why? Why? Why are we here? <laughs> why were you born at this time? Why are you alive right now? What purpose does God have for your life? Why are you on this earth? They can't give answers. Yet the human heart is longing for beauty and truth and goodness. Now look, if you stand outside of a museum and you go inside the museum and you explore all the beautiful treasures in there, you don't see the architect who designed the building. You don't see the contractors who built it. You don't see the artists that created everything in the museum, but you know that somebody built it, somebody designed it, somebody created it, and we can say the same thing of the material world. We didn't see God create it, but it's here. Where did it come from? Any atheists out there? Where did it come from? Because things don't come out of nothing. Herein lies our hope. And that's the beauty of this feast today, is hope. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead. And their passing away was thought as affliction. And their going forth from us, utter destruction. But they are in peace. All souls is a time for us to remember those who have gone before us to be with Jesus. Those whom we love and who we miss. Our family, friends, parishioners. All souls is also a time to remember that we have been baptized into Christ's death. That we share in his cross. And we rejoice in the knowledge that if we carry our cross with fidelity and love, that we will rise with him to new life because Jesus is not the God of the dead. He's the God of the living. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. God wanted to show us once and for all that despite our sin, he loves us and he wants to save us. By embracing in his human heart the Father's love for us, Jesus showed us that by freely choosing to do the Father's will, by freely choosing what is good and true and beautiful, that not even suffering and death can overpower God's love for us. God literally loves us 
to death. Jesus shows us that even in the darkest hours of our lives, God's love knows no end. Even in the hardships of everyday life, God's love knows no bounds. And even in our suffering and death, God's love holds nothing back. My brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus tells us, this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life, and I shall raise him on the last day. When Jesus raised Martha's brother Lazarus from that grave, he called Lazarus by name. The time will come when Christ calls our names as well. And in his immense love, will say, come to life. I did not create you for the grave, but for myself. You have accepted me by faith while on earth. Come now and share my life forever. Amen.